You know, I don't remember much um, from Taiwan. I, I occasionally, um, I'm supposed to be visiting back next um, next month, in fact, and uh, they wanted me to go visit my old um, elementary school, and um, they, they wanted me to, to. Do I remember the name of it? Could I? Could I? I, I couldn't write it. I, I didn't know what. Um, I had. A, I, I took some pictures of it from way back then and tried to show it to them. Can you identify what this school is from from the, the gates of the school? <laughs> but um, so I know very little about it. But it, it also seems that um, a lot of what um, I ended up learning is through trips back there, and um, and, and it sort of jogged memory a little bit about the different places that I was at. Um, what did your folks do? They, so the reason why um, we came to the U.S. was uh, led by my father, who was um, sort of in a, a trading business, and he was um, asked to start either a branch in um, New York or in Chicago, and um, he ended up choosing Chicago, which was pretty, I think, um, uh, I think it was a completely different experience if it was, you know, um, growing up in uh, versus New York, but I think it was very valuable that um, having that experience growing up in the Midwest, where sort of being the only Asian kid um, all the way until, you know, uh, junior high. Um, so you were how old when you got here? Eight years old. Eight. And yeah. spoke no English before you got here? Right. How'd you learn your English? Very quickly. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it's, which is surprising. I wish I uh, also learned Spanish and French at the time, but um, I ended up picking up uh, English just, I mean, they just threw me into a, a third grade class. I don't think they really had any programs for um, people trying to learn English. And so it was really just picking it up in a science class or social studies class. Was it difficult for you? Surprisingly, no. But um, I, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know why, because I, I've had a lot of difficulty learning new languages outside of computer languages. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> OK, so um, here you are. Now, you have brothers and sisters? I have one brother. Older, younger? Younger. Younger brother. So the two little boys come with mom and dad. And dad goes to work opening his new office, or opening the company's new yeah. office. And there you are in school. Did your mom work as well? Um, no, Outside not after we moved. OK. So um, was it, um, uh, I don't know a lot about growing up in a typical Chinese family. Was it a Chinese growing up? Was it, was it very much a nuclear family, and you did family things and traditional things? Um, I think it was just because um, there were there really weren't uh, many sort of Asian influences outside of just the house that we lived in. Um, I think it was very much trying to you know, go um, stay at home or, or go to school for eight hours and really being immersed in a, a, a totally different culture than what we were used to and then coming home. And so it was, uh, it was almost sort of half and half on a, on a daily basis of trying to merge together these cultures. And I think that's partially the, um, the I think that's partially the reason of um, sort of a lot of the, the, the tension of, you know, it really falls on the kids themselves to have to bridge together what, um, what goes on in the classroom versus what goes on at home. I think for me personally, growing up in the Midwest was a little bit different because I was the only kid all the way until high school was um, sort of Asian. So it was really just being immersed completely into, I mean, it just wasn't even a, a, a sort of an issue at all. And, and I, I, I really didn't feel that um, my brother and I didn't really feel any different than any of the other kids that are growing up in the Midwest. Um, and you know, I think a lot of the um, starting to run, learn sort of the, the, um, the differences was only after we started going to, to high school and college. You, uh, did you start early on being interested in computer things and computer science and math, or did that come later? Um, so I, I went to a, um, um, this math and science academy um, in Illinois at the time um, when I was 13. And so actually, I moved away from home when I was 13 years old. And uh, from 13 to 17 was um, in, in this boarding school in Illinois. And it was very much a, a well, it was also the first time that um, you were exposed to all these kids that, you know, they were taking calculus or something at the age of 13. Um, and it was also the time when I f learned that I wasn't the smartest kid anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of smart kids. Um, but, I, but the great thing about it, this was um, back in 93, 94, was that it was also one of the first um, schools that was plugged into both the internet, um, having people that, that really um, were sort of early adopters in a lot of the technology things. So being able to be exposed to that environment, which just wasn't even possible back at um, sort of my home school. Starting from then, it was uh, continue to work and um, explore with these kids. The, uh, I read in an article, the residential counselor at that school described you this way. The pieces were there. They 
just hadn't gelled. He was sometimes like a madly firing ping pong ball. <laughs> is that is that a fellow you remember? I don't think he remembers me because. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that's who you were? Well, I, I remember the quote, and I, I remember. I think he uh, mistook me for uh, somebody else that okay. lived under. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the pieces were all. You were not this manic kid right, all over the place. Um, I don't know. I think it was. Uh, you know, I think at the time there were just so many different things. Like it was, uh, and there were a lot of different programs there. Like um, that, you know, they have this thing where every Wednesday um, you didn't have class, and it was just about this sort of self-exploration about taking something that you're interested in, remotely dealing with academics, but just exploring a lot of this. And um, I think that I think at the time it was really trying to figure out, you know, whether it's um, either math or computer science. It was really interesting, and I think it was. It was Anything that you were interested in, there was somebody, either local resident um, professors or, or um, other kids that, that were interested in the same thing. So it was a lot of exploration on different areas. Would it be fair to describe you in those days as a geek? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I say that with great admiration, you understand. <laughs> okay, you wound up at the University of Illinois right. at Urbana-Champaign. Uh, why did you choose that and what was your goal when you did that? Um, I think there were uh, a few. So I was interested in the computer science programs, and there were a few um, sort of top um, computer science colleges. And uh, the one great thing about going to IMSA is you don't really have to apply to U of I. It's, um, I mean, it's there. There's a pretty strong connection between the kids that attend the um, the academy the, you went to, the academy that I went to, and then um, the entrance into um, U of I was really just a, a one-page signature, and then you're in. And so, uh, over 60, 70 percent of the kids from um, IMSA do end up going to uh, to U of I. So, I think it was more about um, taking the uh, the the college selection process pretty lightly and just going to the uh, the one that was the easiest. So it was the only school that I applied to. All right. <laughs> And how was that? Did you like college? Um, I think again, it was. Uh, I think it's a little bit unusual from my background. Already having gone through, you know, sort of three years with um, a lot of the uh, the same kids, and a lot of those same kids also went to U of I together. So, um, in a lot of ways, I think that was detrimental to, to have gone to IMSA because uh, you know you just ended up staying close to the same group of people that. Um, that you went to school with. But at the same time, again, access to more resources, access to um, more people. And I think the, um, the, the best things there were just uh, things that, were, that we were doing outside of class. I think that's where most of the, um, the learning took place. That's where most of the, uh, the skills that I think we, we, we started building on top of. What did um, you do outside of class, just for instance? So just started, I mean, I think a lot of the, um, the things that we were doing in class were tools or learning the tools of what we need to do. But outs I think it was really outside of class that so was really starting to utilize those tools and build um, whatever it was. So I mean, building programs, building, building things. And it was really just for, um, again, I think more of just a curiosity pursuit more than anything else. So after class, you and a bunch of buddies would sit around and write code, make pro, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> People are laughing. I don't know if I should be, uh, admit that, but uh, yeah, yeah, essentially. Good. 